Good morning, dear students. Today we will begin with the topic of English grammar that is direct and indirect speech. Now, as you can see on your screen in front of you, direct and indirect speech or reported speech or narration. These three names are accredited to one and the same topic in English grammar. About this topic, we will be covering in four videos. This is one of those four or the first of those four. Now, what is direct and what is indirect speech or what is reported speech or what is narration? Direct speech is exact quotation of someone's words. Whereas indirect speech is a means of expression or expressing the content of a statement a question or utterances without quoting explicitly as we do in direct speech. Now, reported speech is that indirect speech. When we report the direct speech, it is also known as reported speech. Narration is that process of changing direct speech to indirect speech and narrating about the incidents or the utterances to other listeners. Now, I want my students to not get confused when you are given the same topic with a different title or with any one title out of these three. To begin with this topic, I will pick up an example. See here, example is Raman said, comma, Inverted commas begin, I am tired and inverted commas closed. Now, Raman is the subject, said is the reporting verb because he said something. Then comma we are using to separate this reporting verb from the reported speech, which is I am tired under quotation marks. This is an example of direct speech. Somebody said something or uttered something and we are presenting it as it was said in his quotation marks. Now, when we change it to indirect speech, we have Raman said that he was tired. This is indirect speech. Now, there are some changes that were functioned on the statement when we turn it from direct to indirect. What are those? Note the important points. The reported speech is put within double inverted commas. That is quotation marks. The first word of the reported speech begins with a capital letter. Like I am tired, I is capital. Third, the reported speech is separated by a comma from the reporting verb. You can see the comma after Raman said is encircled in black. Now these three things we can notice in direct speech statement. In indirect speech, what can we note is quotation marks are not used. The comma separating the reported verb, reporting verb from the reported speech is also removed, right? The conjunction that is generally used after the reporting verb said that. Now, this generally used I have written here because it's not in 100% cases that we will use conjunction that. About it, we will be studying further. Fourth point is, the tense of the reporting verb is never changed. So, we had Raman said in the report, in the indirect speech as well, it was Raman said. This is the reporting verb. So, the said never changes its verb or whatever is the word here will not change its tense. The tense of the reporting verb is never changed. Fifth, the question mark and mark of exclamation are not used. Now this we will be doing in our further examples since this was not a questioning or exclamation statement. But note the point that we do not use question mark and exclamation mark in the indirect speech. 
Sixth point is the interrogative, the imperative and exclamatory sentences are put as assertive, assertive sentences. Seventh and the last point here is the rules of the sequence of tenses are followed. Now there is a particular sequence of tenses that we will be following when we change the reported speech. Sorry, when we change the direct speech to reported speech. Now that sequence of tenses we will be studying here in this topic. Let us come, let's come to the next topic, rules for the change of tenses tenses. Rule 1 is, if the reporting verb is in the present or future tense, the tense of the verb in the reported speech is never changed as, now before I move on to the example, the rule says that if the reporting verb of a given statement is in present or future tense, as we took the example, Raman said, now said is past, but here we have he says or if it is he will say means if it is in present or future then the tense of the verb in the reported speech is never changed means then the tense which is inside the quotation mark will remain the same when we make it indirect speech or reported speech example he says jack kills a giant since says is the reporting verb and it is in present tense, we will not change the verb kills. The indirect of this will be, he says that Jack kills a giant. So this kills, there is no change that has come in the tense. Second example we will take with the future reporting verb or reporting verb in future. Mother will say dinner is ready. Now, will say is future tense and it is reporting verb. So, dinner is ready will remain in the same tense, which is the present tense. Mother will say that dinner is ready. So, no change came in the tense because the reporting verb was in future tense. Now, we have rule 2 where we follow the sequence of tenses. For that, we see here, if the reporting verb, rule 2, if the reporting verb is in the past tense, the verb in the reported speech is changed into the corresponding past tense. Now, before we move to the sequence, let us understand what is this rule 2. They are saying if the reporting verb is in the past tense, means as the very first example we saw, Raman said, I am tired. So if that said or Raman said, if that reporting verb is in past tense, which is there, then the verb in the reported speech, then the verb inside the quotation marks will be changed. Unlike here with the reporting verb being in present and future. When this reporting verb is said, which is in past tense, then inside the quotation marks, that tense will change. And how it will change? It will change into the corresponding past tense. Now, what is corresponding past tense? Means you have one tense and then there is another tense representing the past of that particular tense. Now, what is that corresponding tense for each tense? We will see here. Simple present is changed into simple past. Present continuous is changed into past continuous. Similarly, moving ahead, present perfect is changed into past perfect. Present perfect continuous is changed into past perfect continuous. Then coming to simple past. Simple past is changed into past perfect because past perfect is the corresponding past of simple past. Past continuous is changed into past perfect. Past perfect and past perfect continuous remain unchanged because there is no corresponding past to past perfect and past perfect continuous. Then the last and the eighth point is shall, will, can and may are changed into should, would, could and might respectively. Now with this we cover up to rule 2 and with this I also stop this first out of the four classes for direct indirect speech. 
in the next class we will discuss these eight rules again with examples till then make notes for what we have studied today and go through those notes to thoroughly understand the topic up to here thank you